Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. After recently realizing I don't have many awards, I decided to try to do something that I think would get an award, so I put on multiple fedoras at once hoping there's an award for it. Well, there's no award for that. Patrick Starr is a good character, but he's also the comic relief. If there's one thing to take away from Cars 2, it's never put the comic relief character in the lead. That's not to say it can't work at all, but it almost never works when we're talking about theatrical films. But since we're talking about a TV show, it can be tackled a bit differently, but the same rule still applies. Big Pink Loser is the episode where Patrick wants an award after seeing all the Spongebob awards and gets a job at the Krusty Krab so he can accomplish that. This episode aired on November 16, 2000 and is everybody's favorite Patrick Starr episode. I'd argue that this is Patrick Starr's biggest role in the series up to this point. All of Patrick's major appearances up to this point have been with Spongebob almost the entire time. Sure, Patrick is with Spongebob almost the entire time in this episode too, but the other episodes have both of them trying to accomplish something together. Like in episode 12, Murray Man and Barnacle Boy, where they both try to get Murray Man and Barnacle Boy out of retirement. Or episode 8, Naughty Nautical Neighbors, where they have a fight and compete for Squidward's attention. This episode is focused on Patrick's failed efforts to get an award. Keeping all that in mind, let's watch this episode and see how well Patrick was used here. So the episode starts up and the French narrator talks about all kinds of undersea life in Bikini Bottom and shows Patrick. The mailman delivers a package, which was an award for Patrick. He was so excited and wanted to show it off everywhere. He went to show Spongebob, but he discovered the award was actually for Spongebob and Patrick got it by mistake. Patrick was upset, but Spongebob reminded him about ice cream, but Patrick accidentally opened Spongebob's award closet. Holy crap, this episode was ahead of its time. Patrick started to become upset over not having an award, so Spongebob tried to cheer him up. He said that Patrick would have to do something to earn him an award. Patrick's suggestions were all too much until he decided to get a job at the Krusty Krab. Later at the Krusty Krab, Mr. Krabs gave Patrick a job and Squidward quit. Spongebob reminded Patrick to work for his award and Patrick was upset. I know, right? I hate the fact that I have to work to cut up this big tree branch that fell in my backyard. Spongebob prepared an order, but Patrick ate it, and Spongebob told him to take it to the customer. He did, but he ate it. He brought it to the table again, but ate it at the table this time. Later on, Spongebob asked Patrick to answer the phone. Every time Patrick answered the phone, somebody asked if they were calling the Krusty Krab, to which he said, No! This is Patrick! But Spongebob said that the Krusty Krab was the name of the restaurant and Patrick got more upset. Later, Spongebob asked Patrick to sweep, but Patrick didn't turn the broom over before he swept. More awards showed up for Spongebob and Patrick got pissed and waxed the floor with the broom, kicking the dust everywhere. Spongebob took Patrick in the kitchen and decided to open a jar. Patrick grabbed a pickle. This is a stapler. Even opening the jar proves to be difficult for Patrick until he finally gets his hand on the lid and Spongebob told Patrick to do exactly as he does and Patrick manages to open the jar and they celebrate. Later that night after work, Patrick started to feel more confident after Spongebob telling him how to open the jar. Spongebob says if Patrick does exactly as he does, he'd have an award in no time. Next morning, Spongebob saw that Patrick was now dressing exactly like him and was both creeped out and flattered. As they went to work, Spongebob saw that Patrick was copying his speech and mannerisms. You did tell him to do exactly what he does. At work, Patrick did everything Spongebob did, even down to getting hurt. In the kitchen, Spongebob put his hand on the grill and Patrick burned himself and Spongebob using a decoy helped him figure out that Patrick was copying him. You just now started to catch on? Spongebob got annoyed at Patrick copying him, so he tried to get Patrick to stop, but to no avail, and then they started running back to the neighborhood, and Squidward went back inside to work again. Spongebob tried to use a special jump rope trick, but this didn't work either. He hit himself in the head with a hammer, which Patrick himself actually did a long time ago. Then Spongebob discovered that Patrick even painted his rock to look like Spongebob's pineapple. Spongebob ran back into his own house and got the idea to imitate Patrick to retaliate. Spongebob's impression reinforced Patrick's statement that he's just a big pink loser. Another trophy arrived, and Patrick thought it was for Spongebob, 
but the trophy was for Patrick because he did absolutely nothing longer than anybody else. Patrick was overjoyed and he went home to protect his title, aka sleep. The French narrator said excellence is found everywhere in Bikini Bottom and the episode ends. So that was Big Pink Loser and I have to say, that is a damn great episode. It is, without a doubt, one of the best episodes of season 2. There are so many things to love about this episode. The part I watched the most as a kid was the scene where Patrick was trying to open the jar, especially when Spongebob said, the lid, 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 It was funny how Patrick thought he broke the jar when he actually didn't, and when Patrick was pulling out random things that weren't jars, which of course became a popular meme on YouTube. I also liked when Spongebob built a Gary-shaped house of cards when Patrick came in and caused it to fall. I also like how the house of cards is in the shape of Gary. It took me quite a few watches when I was young before I truly realized that it was in the shape of Gary. I think that's a neat detail. I've been trying to build that house of cards and I will do it one of these days. I also love the part where the load of awards comes out of nowhere. This is something I always thought of as a kid, but I personally thought the awards would have been for teaching Patrick how to deliver food to the customer, teaching Patrick how to answer the phone, help Patrick with sweeping the floor, and encouraging Patrick. Boom, there you go. This should go without saying, but the scenes of Patrick trying and failing are really funny. Like when he answers the phone and screams that he's Patrick and not a crusty crab, and when Patrick sweets with the broom upside down. I also love Patrick copying Spongebob, especially when Spongebob and Patrick slipped and fell on the mop water and them going back and forth with each other in the kitchen. I also love when Patrick was showing off the award at the beginning of the episode and when they were running down the street with Spongebob still trying to outdo Patrick. Speaking of Patrick, let's go back to what I was talking about earlier. Patrick has the lead role in this episode and despite the most important rule of professional writing, Patrick has been put in the lead which on paper is a recipe for disaster. But in my opinion, this episode did it right. And here's why. Patrick thought he got an award, but he soon discovers that he got it by accident. And when he sees all of SpongeBob's other awards, he starts to become upset because this makes him realize he hasn't done anything significant like SpongeBob has. He doesn't get mad and do anything mean to SpongeBob or act jealous of the awards. He just wants some recognition for himself. Spongebob helps him get an award, but because Patrick's not very smart, he ends up failing every task Spongebob assigns him and he starts to get more and more discouraged. He's happy when he finally does something correctly, in this case, opening the jar. Spongebob says that if Patrick does exactly what Spongebob does, Patrick will have an award in no time. Patrick, being the Patrick that he is, takes this literally and copies Spongebob by dressing like him and doing every single action that he does. Spongebob gets irritated by this and tries to copy Patrick as a result. When he does this, Patrick says he's nothing more than just a big pink loser and starts to think that he won't get an award and starts to become a bit frustrated. Immediately after he says that, he does get the award he wanted so badly, and he's happy. There are many reasons why this episode works. Patrick isn't completely annoying or insufferable, and when he does screw up, it's funny, but you still feel bad for him. Patrick misinterprets Spongebob's words, but in a way that makes sense for him to mess up. He f***s up for sure, but he does mean well and genuinely tries to do things right. Also, even though Patrick is in the lead, Spongebob still has a major amount of screen time and still plays an important role in the story to help balance out Patrick being stupid. If you want to get technical, Spongebob and Patrick do have roughly the same amount of screen time in this episode, but Patrick is still clearly the lead. He's also not completely rude throughout the whole thing. Sure, he gets angry twice in this episode, but that's because he's getting frustrated because his goal is getting harder and harder for him to accomplish, and people act irrationally when they get angry. It's not like episode 205, The Splinter, where Patrick is completely rude to Spongebob for no reason. The only reason he gets mad here is because he gets more and more discouraged when it's getting harder and harder for him to get what he's trying so hard to get. You clearly understand Patrick's character in this episode, and it's not to the point where he's so convoluted that he ruins everything. It's a simple story, and every side of Patrick's character featured in this episode has been established before in a previous episode. It works here because everything he's going through is easy to understand, every reason why he acts the way he does makes sense, and he's not completely aggravating. 
That is why an episode like this works. The Patrick Star show doesn't work because his character goes all over the place and you have no f clue what the hell is happening. So with all that in mind, it should be pretty obvious why this episode works and why some others don't. This is, in my opinion, the perfect Patrick Star episode. He's utilized perfectly in this episode and it's a good example of how to put the comic relief character in the spotlight and do it right. That and this line right here. Hey pal, you just blowing from stupid town? So that's the reason people rave about this episode. This episode is great and in line with the truest and best form of Patrick's character, the lovable goof dummy that we all know and love. Big Pink Loser is an amazing episode. There are so many hilarious scenes and it's a good example of how to take the comic relief character and put him in the spotlight and do it correctly. I always really love this episode and Patrick is awesome here, so that's just another reason why this episode is so great. But I still want an award, so I'm going to attempt to break the world record for Mario and Luigi Dream Team. Two days later. I'm tired of trying.